Well, thank you again for staying with us all this while. You know, Nigeria, we've been talking about the youth bulge in Africa. Well, uh, let's have a discussion this morning uh, around the Pan-African Youth Innovation Forum, its objectives and the role of science and innovation in Africa's development with those two gentlemen you saw there. Uh, Chinedum Ewuzie is MBA Director, Lagos Business School. Thank you so much for joining us. And he's here with uh, Dr. Bosanti Jani, co-founder, co-creation hub Nigeria. Thank you again for being oh, here with us. All right, so first of all, perhaps a good place to start to be to tell us what this whole thing is about. Dr. Tijani. Uh, it's a gathering of some of the uh, brilliant uh, minds in, in, on the continent, but those based in Nigeria with a very special uh, somebody <laughs> that we all know who is uh, a massive inspiration to all of us all over the world, someone that has been committed to uh, putting his resources and time into making our world a better place. Yeah. And the idea is how do we come together to talk about the future of the continent and how we can inspire more young people uh, to innovate and help us solve significant problems using science and technology. Well, um, so Uzi, this is not the first of its kind in Africa, obviously. I've seen some others, you know, Kenya and a number of other places. Um, there must be a reason that the Lagos Business School is partnering in this venture. Well, yeah, I mean, so at LBS, typically we focus on creating programs, but one of the things that we also do is creating platforms. So this is a platform for like minds to come together and discuss these issues. So we're looking at different perspectives where, I mean, he has spoken of a global leader who is coming to talk about it. We're also going to be talking with him. We're also going to be speaking with Professor Chris Obiti. So you see it's a combination of practitioners, um, international, domestic, and of course the academia to discuss these issues. Um, I'm wondering what you're looking forward to about you know, the participation of this great global leader. What will your platforms be leveraging on? Is it investment and what are the expected outcomes? Dr. Buzi. Well, so the expected outcomes, of course, first to be knowledge. Um, it's important that at this time we step in and begin to talk about this matter. So the, the industry has grown. I mean, science and tech has driven a lot of innovation in Nigeria and Africa. But the question now becomes how do you turn these things into businesses, sustainable businesses? And that's the question that we're trying to answer. So we're trying to answer this question through bringing these people together to discuss core things, knowledge, investments, partnerships, platforms and networks. So that's the kind of thing we're going to have. So knowledge, discuss, knowledge discussions of businesses, how you can build sustainable businesses, what are the platforms that you need, how, how much money do you need, how do you, how do you access finances, and basically how do you build a sustainable business. So in terms of um, investment, are there any you know, um, agreements you know, that are possible outcomes, not just in Lagos now, but that would dovetail to other subnationals in the Federation? So the way it's going to happen is that we're going to get members of the ecosystem. Now, members of the ecosystem include, of course, people such as um, Pursuit Jijani here, but also investors who are also going to be coming together. So it actually depends on people who attend the program. There are going to be a lot of opportunities to get investment. So yes, there will be. Um, Mr. Boswell, I'm interested also in you know, what you do. It's Exciting to see those young children in those spaces, you know, uh, learning with Lego in an unrestricted environment. But how fast are we moving in terms of replicating those learning spaces in public and private institutions of learning, particularly um, early child learning uh, institutions in public and private schools in Nigeria? No, it's a fantastic question uh, in the sense that if you look at the, the trajectory and growth that we've achieved within science and technology in the last probably 12, 12 years on the continent and also in Nigeria as well, uh, you see that it's been proven that, that this is a space that we just need to unlock more opportunity and it can take us on the path to significant productivity. But the question you ask is always the challenge, right? So you can do it for a small uh, bunch of people in uh, Yaba or you can set up something fantastic in Lekki. How do you scale them, that, those mm -hmm. kind of in interventions sustainably across a country like Nigeria? And that's the big question and that's where innovation comes to play. That's where we need the best minds in our, in our country, but also continent, to be thinking of not only creating, but creating to ensure that we can bridge the gap between those who have significantly and those who don't. Um, but, but also, it's also a, a big issue around profitability as well. So how do you create for society without just not focusing on, on just profitability, but also driving impact, striking that balance 
is where you know the, the, the core of innovation is. So what recommendations are you making as a professional in the field? I think the recommendation is that it's, it's about time, and, and I hope that this, this time around that we can see progress, that it's about time that we prioritize the role of science and technology yeah. as a people. You cannot drive productivity without, without these things. Channels can be the greatest it can be without technology. That, that's the fact. Agriculture in Nigeria can be what it should be without, without technology. Transportation cannot be better without technology. So we need to understand that for, for us to drive the productivity level that we want to see in our economies, technology and science is important. Well, uh, Mr. Uzi, my when I asked you about uh, you know, the takeaways, the outcomes. Um, you've talked about the outcomes have been, has been knowledge. Uh, but then, hey, we're in Lagos, Nigeria, <laughs> the smallest geographical space in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But we have 36 states, some of them like three times, four times the size, even though not the same in population. How do you, how, how do you see the outcome of this knowledge scaling all across the nation? Well, first is the reach. Um, by design, the program is hybrid or online. So first and foremost, of course, is that we're going to be broadcasting these events across the whole world, across Africa, across um, Nigeria. Second is, like I always go back to the members of the ecosystem who are coming, okay? So yes, we're talking about knowledge, but like I said, there are all other opportunities, such as investment opportunities that can happen there. Because imagine everybody's coming together. Everybody's coming, Bill Gates, LBS, CC Hub, investors, ecosystem players are all coming together for one event. I'm also going to be having the same kind of discussion. So I mean, who can tell the kind of things that can happen, discussions that can happen, we think that are. Mm. But, ju but just to add to that okay. as well, is, is to say with this program, we're also working with hubs in different parts of the, of the country. Uh, so beyond the fact that channels is, all, is ensuring that this is on, on here live, you know, uh, it's been live stream as, as it's been said, but we're also picking specific tech hubs in about 10 different locations All across the Nigeria. Okay. And the idea is for those who don't have the right internet or devices to stream and watch, they can go to those centers mm. and actually be part of the is it Is it a, an event you, virtual event you said? Yeah. yeah. Is it something you attend by registration or you just disperse the link? Absolutely, you have to register and I think it's been, the link has been put up and it's okay. probably going to come up again. Okay. Yeah. Running in the advertisement that we Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and speaking of that advertisement, you know, it, it, it calls out to young people to be okay. part of this process. D just a moment, Bukola. So on the screen right now is uh, the event flyer. Yeah. yeah. And that's the significant individual you <laughs> do want to <laughs> mention <laughs> to us. <laughs> you do want to mention <laughs> to us. <laughs> well, the cat is out of the bag and it's quite, it's quite a big cat. Go ahead, Bukola. Yes, thank you, Ayo. Yes, you, you've seen it there. Um, the chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Co-chair. Co-chair, yes. Mr. Bill Gates will be there. So uh, you, you've called out to young people to participate in um, this tech hub. And we've seen quite a number of young persons in Nigeria doing amazing things with technology. We've had on this program sometime last year, a young individual manufacturing, um, what's that thing called again? Uh, the aerial surveillance equipment mm. locally. Yeah. And we asked them, yeah, drones. And we asked him how, uh, if he has gotten any support you know, from government in terms of, you know, the potential of that to um, help with the fight against security. So what, what are you saying to such young people who will be participating in this tech hub about the potential and the prospects of them getting support to scale up, um, you know, their knowledge and their creativity? So it's so interesting, um, the chief the person, who, the key person who's attending the event, of course, is Bill Gates. And to think that he started his company in 1975. Okay, so I, he is also where we, he was where we are now in terms of not necessarily having support, not necessarily knowing how the industry is going to turn out. Okay, so first is that we need to understand what it takes, you know, given the kind of obstacles that we have in, in our country. You need to understand what it takes personally. You need to understand what it takes infrastructure versus um, in terms of infrastructure. You need to understand what it takes in terms of investment. So first is that we're going to be having those kind of discussions, okay? Second, I would say to them is the challenges that we face in Nigeria are not unique to us. Um, the truth is that the industry is growing, and it's the same challenge that you have in any industry that is growing. The government, regulators may not be able to catch up in terms of the knowledge. So it's the fact is that what it, what, that's what it is. What we'll be saying to them is um, come and hear what somebody who 30, 40 years ago 
face the same yeah, situation that he did, what he has achieved. Yeah. Come and hear from the likes of Bosu how this ecosystem is being grown and understand, you know, the kind of networks that you need to build. Come and hear from LBS faculty in terms of the business knowledge that you require. Because it's one thing to have a fancy idea about you know, solving problems and all the technology, but you need to know that you're going to build a business. Absolutely. So come and hear these three things and begin to understand and come up with your plans on how you're going to move forward. Okay, you didn't add the fact that he started is it in the garage or... Uh... Exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> said in the garage, yeah. So, okay, uh, yeah. but you know, by way of uh, call to action, um, you said that people need to register Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. give us the details one more time. I can see it on the screen if you can look at it as well. It's a hybrid event happening tomorrow. Yes, it is. Okay, and um, the venue is your phone, <laughs> tablet, <laughs> and uh, it's happening tomorrow. Time? At 10 o'clock. It's happening tomorrow. Is there a pre event event? Well, so the, there's uh, some activities that will start by 9, okay. um, but if you want to go to the website, you can just go to www.africa.com. Um, it's on the page and you can, you can click it. So there are three events that will happen by 9, but the core activities start at 10. Is it interactive? Oh, interactive. So we have a couple of people who people have already sent in questions. Of course, you mm. can understand that Bill Gates is coming, so a lot of people have a lot of questions. Mm. So we're already accumulating questions that are going to be answered on that day. And there's also going to be a lot of interaction with the different ecosystem players. So it's mm. going to be very interactive online. Events. How likely is there to be uh, some, any kind of follow-up to the event, to follow up on the outcomes? I, I think there's, uh, the mood in the nation uh, is exciting and it's a follow-up to actually what's been happening in the last couple so of years. So this event is a follow-up? Uh, for me, that's it. You know, oh, because, really? no, you ask, you, no, it's significant because in technology and science, right, mm. uh, there's a major role for signaling uh, when it comes to investments, right? You were asking, uh, you know, whether there's going to be funding for people. When we started CCOB about 14 years ago, it was difficult for folks to actually get funded. Uh, people struggled to find $5,000 to back their businesses, which is when we reached out to a billionaire in Nigeria who created a fund that is now funding people across Africa. As at for last year, hub. no, no, generally startups okay. across Africa. As of last year, Nigeria alone raised over one billion US dollars in funding to technology businesses in, in this country. But when you dial it back to probably about six, seven years ago, we were struggling to even get two hundred million dollars no, into, into the market. It's not yeah. coming from government. It's, it's not coming from government, and, uh -huh. and I don't think it's necessarily government's role to actually fund businesses. Government's role is to make the environment exciting and interesting for investors to come in and fund, but local investors, but also foreign investors. But, but has government done that? So I, I think we've seen significant progress over the year. There's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of work. You know, some, some of the things that we have to do to inspire confidence that can drive much more money. Nigeria is the kind of country that can be attracting over 10 billion US dollars to okay. technology companies. So besides, besides participating in this tech yeah. hub that is coming up, what can young people do to position themselves to access you know, part of that $1 billion if it come in, in the near future? Absolutely. Plug into innovation communities around you. Uh, when we started CCO 14 years ago, we were the first in the country. Today, I think Nigeria has over 150 tech hubs all across the continent. It's about being part of that community. That's where serendipity happened. That's where you gain access to resources and know-how on how to build businesses, but also how to scale them and make them sustainable as well. Mm -hmm. And I think most importantly, it's also how you actually gain access to funding. Now, talking about um, you know, startup and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, how does a uh, startup law recently signed, how does it play in this? Let me start with you, Mr. Uzi. Well, first is that I think that that the law has been signed first is the recognition of the industry mm -hmm. and I think the players and the effort. I think that's, that's first. Two is that it's going to improve access to funding, which is very, very, very important. Three is that it's going to attract more players in the industry. Like, like Boswell had said, the key, one key thing for the industry is actually the ecosystem. So you need to have a balanced ecosystem of different kind of players, investors, knowledge providers, the founders and all, and all of that. Four is actually guidance. So we're going to be clear on what it takes to run a startup, you know, who an investor is, how you can access funds. So there's clarity, there's more clarity in the process. Okay. Though, of course, there's more that can be done, but I think this is a fantastic start. Dr. Tijani. I think the startup act is, uh, is also accepting that something is happening and we need to create the right policies and regulations to back, to back those things up. Because innovation, as you can imagine, is expensive. You have to be extremely intentional. 
So the, the normal laws of doing business doesn't necessarily support innovation. Mm -hmm. Innovation is not entrepreneurship. I always say this. But innovation cannot be completed without entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That you're a businessman okay. doesn't, or a woman doesn't mean you're actually innovating. So the laws and the policies that you need to drive innovation has to be intentional. And I think that's what the Startup Act is about. It should be part of a larger conversation, however. If you go to more serious countries, you'll see them have what they call the national innovation system. Okay. So your Startup Act needs to be part of that. So there's still a bit of more work for us to do in strengthening that innovation systems that doesn't just limit support to startups, but also support large companies, micro businesses to be able to innovate. Because when we see more people innovating, we're going to be able to solve our problems. So many questions to ask you, really, <laughs> because um, it's always exciting for me. Um, I'm, I'm recruiting her as well. Along the line. When it comes to SMEs and young people, because that's the future. If we do not prepare for the future before the future mm -hmm. comes, we're definitely in trouble. For now, we have to thank you very much. But before we go, a quick uh, information about that event again. Uh, venue, date, time. And the and how to register. Okay. So, <laughs> the event, so the event is starts at 9 with some pre-activity, but the main activity starts by 10 a.m. Um, we're hosting Bill Gates um, in partnership with LBS and, of course, CC Home um, to discuss the, to host the Youth and Innovation Forum. Uh, to log on, so we have the adverts going on now, you can log on to www.africa.com and you will see the landing page and you can click it and you can register. So the event is primarily online. Uh, you are moderating the event. I am, yes. What should we look, up, look forward to? I think um, a unique opportunity to dive into the mind of uh, a great achiever, uh, high impact creator. You know, what does it take for you to dedicate your life to solving society's problems? I think, I think that's unique, and we need more people on our continent thinking that way. Yeah. So this is a unique opportunity for us to learn from him. For those who might think, hey, yeah, Bill Gates is American, yeah. will he really understand the uh, African context? What would you say to that? This is one of the few people on head that's dedicated the last probably 15 mm -hmm. or so years solving serious problems in Africa, traveling across the continent, trying to help understand how to improve health care, education, you know, provide better opportunities for us to be able to you know, maximize the opportunities we have in agriculture. Uh, I don't think, okay. <laughs> I don't think I need to answer that <laughs> no, question. That, that, was <laughs> that, that, needed to be, that needed to be put, you know, put out there. But, then, you know, yeah. Mr. Wuzier, mm. we're talking about young people. Yeah. Not a very pop, um, patient population and uh, not a very tolerant population when it comes to something that doesn't sound like what we want to hear. Um, we will respect Bill Gates. Mm. But then when he has left, uh, how do we ensure that the learnings are sustained both in their hearts and in their localities since it's going to be happening all over the nation? That's a, that's a good question. And um, we understand that one event is not going to solve everybody's problems. Thank okay? you for, for noting that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole um, sequence of activities we partner, we're doing with all the partners. Okay, so we at LBS, we have a series of programs, follow-up programs that we've planned after this. CC Hub also has that. And there's a lot of collaboration that's going to happen. Uh, let's not have the expectation that you're just going to come for one event and all of a sudden one million dollars is going to enter your pocket. That's not going to happen. But you're going to start a journey which will be continued by LBS and CC Hub. Will there be any form of, um, um, what's that word you used the other time? Uh, uh, use a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a, a demonstration of existing technology or innovating technology in Africa. Will there be any such thing? Some guy who came up with an electric car, the drone that she mentioned, is there any such plan? Not for this event. I mean, that's, that's a good suggestion, but not for this event. So this event is really focused around experience sharing and meeting people and creating a network. And like Boswell has said, we're speaking with somebody who has done it 40, how many years, 40 or even more years ago. So he is where he is, where he was then is probably where many of us are now. So it's good for us to really hear from him. So, I mean, all those other events where we can have demonstration, now you, will come much later. Now you have to pay for that consultancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting. Is there any promise of reward for, you know, um, an outstanding presentation of the technology that solves, you know, society's problems at this event? 
Well, I will speak, but I think Basu would also be good, good to answer that. I, uh, not at this event, no. Okay, um, we're not going to be demonstrating ideas or innovative products. So we're going to be listening. We're going to be asking questions. We're going to be learning. We're going to be equipping ourselves with the knowledge and the skills to move to move forward. So not at this event, no. Okay. Yeah. But I think I mentioned earlier. So, so this event is is part of a, in my mind, a bigger uh, agenda. If you look at it that way, okay. Uh, you know. Uh, Mr. Gates met with the president. Uh, you would imagine, and, and he did that the last time he came here as well, where you know he, he gave strong advice to our government and our leaders on how to actually build that support system that young people need to be able to innovate. Long and short, yeah. you're saying that there's a lot more to come. I think, oh, yeah. I think there's engagement with stakeholders okay. that is ongoing yeah. that, that will drive exactly what you yeah. want to say. Okay. This uh, event is about advancing Africa, unleashing the power of youth in science and innovation. We have to thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for being here. You know, I usually joke that uh, once you have white hair, you're no longer a young man. Okay. <laughs> Let me disprove that. Chine Dum is MBA Director, Lagos Business School. He is here with Dr. Bosun Tijani, co-founder, co-creation hub Nigeria. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here this morning.